everyone. Welcome to Keeping Up with Modern Classrooms, our first episode of season two. Today, we're going to be talking all about rolling out the model. My name is Sarah Moon, she, her pronouns. I am an elementary instructional coach and interventionist here in Durham, North Carolina. I'm Talia Kumandorf, she, her pronouns, and I teach high school science in Reedsville, North Carolina. And my name is Monty Woodard. I am a middle school science teacher who actually recently relocated to Washington, D.C. Um, and we are super excited to have you all here for season two of Keeping Up with the Modern Classrooms. All right. So today we're going to be talking about all about rolling out the model. This episode is coming out in August of 2022. So a lot of us are right around that point where either school is about to begin or it's already begun. And we're really going to be focusing on conversations with stakeholders because within a modern classroom, within all classrooms, right, we have a lot of different stakeholders. And so when we're rolling out that model to stakeholders, it's important to think about that, right? And so of course we have the classroom teacher as that first stakeholder. Then that classroom teachers connected to those learners, right? Whether those be kindergarten learners or university age learners, but there's that uh, educator and learner relationship there. Within also that school setting, we also have school staff, right? And that school staff might be administrators, they might be ESL teachers, they might be counselors, they might be paraprofessionals, right? But we have that school staff that that classroom teacher is a community of. And that school staff is often connected to learners too, right? Perhaps not on the level that a classroom teacher is, but there is that connection there as well. And then lastly, we have the caregivers of those learners, right? We have the families, the aunts, the uncles, the parents, everybody that cares for that learner success. And so we end up having this whole group of stakeholders that it's important to make sure that they really understand the model and they understand how we together as a stakeholder team can help learners find that success. And so when we're thinking about rolling out the model, let's first think about it in terms of rolling out to students, right? The first thing would be a unit zero. And there's a whole episode of Keeping Up With Modern Classrooms, actually the first episode ever done about unit zero. So be sure to check out that if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into what unit zero can be. But typically a unit zero kind of introduces protocols and routines and goes over common expectations and maybe introduces common tools so that that way students can be comfortable with that. It also allows that teacher an opportunity to review those expectations. Once we've rolled out the model to students, we also want to think about rolling out the model to school staff. And so we want to first off think about orienting classroom visitors, right? If we have other professionals that are going to be pushing in, that are going to be supporting students, we want to make sure that they're comfortable within that setting too, and that they know how they can go ahead and leverage their, um, their help and their professional um, uh, knowledge so that that way, again, our students can succeed. And we also want to perhaps share the research, right? You might get some questions of, well, why are we doing it this way, right? Really making sure, again, that that understanding is there. You'll see in our um, classroom visitor handout, which will be available in the show notes and also is available in our back to school toolkit, um, that there's some great models that you can use, some great visuals that you can use to orient classroom visitors. Um, this kind of shows that blended instruction, self-paced mastery-based grading. This also shows that revision reassessment. So using visuals to orient your stakeholders can be helpful as well. And then last, we want to think about rolling out the model to caregivers. And so caregivers want to know how their learner school experience will set them up for success, right? And sometimes we might get pushback, whether we be in a traditional setting or a modern classroom setting. And that's okay, right? Because pushback often stems from people wanting to understand, right? And so we can go ahead and address concerns and also share that student-centered approach, right? Because at the, at the very core, modern classrooms is about students and about ensuring student access and success. Open house is a great opportunity to even involve your caregivers in a model. Perhaps if they have a back to school night or an open house night, they can kind of experience that model. You can also address screen time concerns um, and also just clear up any misconceptions, right? A lot of times there might be the misconception that in a modern classroom, kiddos are just on that laptop all day, right? But that's not true because we have those four modes of instruction, of blended instruction, small group, one-on-one -on -one, and whole group. And of course, again, bringing it home with that student-centered approach. So 
all in all, we always want to make sure that we are celebrating and putting learners in that forefront. And then we also want to go ahead and address some common questions from our Facebook community about rolling out the model. So I'm going to stop uh, talking for a second so that that way we can go ahead and hear from all of our voices. Um, Monty and Tavia, I would love for us to go ahead and start off with just kind of talking about how we bring in those support staff, like whether you have an instructional assistant or a special education teacher, how do you you kind of incorporate that team atmosphere within your modern classroom? Um, so I guess the biggest thing for me and the reason why I don't typically have to think that hard about this question is because my co-teacher or any, uh, my co-teacher especially is another extension of myself. And so her and I, you know, when I did have a co-teacher, she had the same authority in the classroom as me. I did not treat her as a co-teacher as such. Um, yes, she had people that were in her caseload. Yes, she had people that she specifically was looking out for in the class, but she was another teacher just like me. And so she did the same things that I did. So any resources that I created, she had access to. I also gave her the flexibility to cre create some things on her own should she have wanted to. Um, and we just really shared the workload. And so for me, I just make sure to give access to stuff if I know people are coming in. Like in one of my classes, I had a counselor who came in once a week to kind of keep an eye on the kiddo make sure she had access to my Google Classroom, to any hyperdocs I had just so she knew what was going on. So my biggest piece of advice there is don't be afraid to share your materials with those that are coming into your classroom. Um, because again, if you can make it easier for them to know what's going on, then they can better support the students that they're pushing in for. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, when you say access, Monty, that's really powerful because um, again, Modern Classrooms is all about access. And while we can ensure student access, also a lot of the systems really make that access for paraprofessionals or for special education teachers or co-teachers, it really makes it easy, right? I know uh, when I was in my elementary uh, room with all subjects, it's tough planning for all subjects already. And then you have to coordinate with your ESL teacher and your special education teacher and the counselor, and it's just a whole lot. And instead, once I started doing Modern Classroom, I just sent them my progress tracker where everything was all linked. Just like you said, Monty, you know, you share your LMS. And it really allowed us to finally have some true collaborative planning time instead of having like, that five minutes in the hallway when you try to catch one another, it really allowed us to do that, that true collaborative planning. And, and they really felt like, um, I think, more equal partners within the classroom because they were having that, that true, um, that true partnership. Awesome, awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and move to our second one, uh, which is a bit of a loaded question, I know. Um, we often hear in our Facebook group, like my admin has no idea what modern classroom is. So where do I even start? Tavia, do you want to kind of start us off in terms of admin and modern classrooms? Uh, yeah, so I don't know if this would kind of be encouraged, but I'm kind of a rebel. I'm one of those people who uh, ask for forgiveness instead of permission type people. Uh, and being science-minded, I kind of think the data says it all. So if I can prove to you that this is working, that's better than me trying to explain to you what it is. Once I show you that it works, then I can take the time to kind of show you what it's all about. But that's all, let's be honest, admin cares about is, is it really beneficial to the kids? Is this going to help, for instance, test scores or whatever is the school is being graded off of? So uh, when I, luckily for me, my admin was on board even before I was, but when we had the new admin come in, this was kind of where we were. She didn't want to, you know, kind of take away what we've been doing, but she did want to see is the proof in the pudding. So um, I kind of would want to present it. Okay, this is where we were before. This is what has happened since I've done this kind of thing. And then I would break it down. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think data is really important. And I think also, um, I think it can be overwhelming to think about having that conversation sometimes, especially if you're trying to learn the model yourself. So I'd also just love to lift up, you know, utilize our uh, modern classroom back to school toolkit, utilize our modern classroom, uh, classroom visitor guide, right? Like there's already a lot of materials that you can go ahead and customize to give you those talking points. And then with the multitude of data that you can get within a modern classroom, whether that be from your mastery checks or your student check-ins, it can really create a lot of talking points for you. Monty, uh, anything that you'd like to share about the admin side? Yeah, I would say if this is something that you are truly interested in, just be honest about 
why you think this is something that you want for your class, the benefits that you think you would see, share the research with them, um, tell them the amount of work that you put into it. And, you know, you know, just really have a conversation with your admin. Um, and if you have good admin, you know, your admin is going to trust you regardless. Unfortunately, there is a huge set of, you know, our population in this country that just doesn't necessarily believe in what modern classroom preaches. And that's unfortunate. And if you are in that situation, you know, that was me last year. I was at an institution that just did not want to be associated with modern classroom in any way whatsoever and essentially told me no, um, even though I did not even ask. Um, I was told no. And I think if you're just in that situation, all I can say is one, I totally understand the frustration that you will feel because that was me last year. And two, I would just say figure out ways that you can do it kind of under the table without it being so blatant and in the face. So one, one of my really great ways that I like to keep modern classroom in my classroom without necessarily saying it's modern classroom, is just a blended instruction piece. I still like to have instructional videos that I provide with, pro provided with students. Um, I was told that I had to lecture. Um, and so what I would do is I would deliver my information whole class once. And then if a kid was absent or kids wanted to revisit, I made sure to always have my videos like as a, you know, on the back burner type of situation. So I would say that um, there are ways to do it, but we hear you if your admin are just not on board and you've had that conversation and they're just like, no, totally understand. And all I can really offer you is find a new job in the next school year if you're able. That's really all I have to say. That's what I did and I feel way better. Uh, Monty, I'm trying to resist putting in a plug for it because I know everywhere is looking for teachers. And if you would love to come work at a place that really loves modern classrooms, hit me up. I'm sure we could find a position for you. Um, thank you for that, Monty, because that is really important to hear. Um, okay, team. So we've talked about support staff. We've talked about admin. Let's go ahead and move to caregivers. And I'm really interested to hear how y'all kind of explain to caregivers, you know, how, what the modern classroom model is, how it's beneficial. Um, I'll be the first to say that I don't typically start off a conversation with parents saying like, oh, we're doing this and, you know, this is new because it's really not. I think that's a lot of times what can kind of get people nervous is if they hear, oh, we're doing this new thing. And even though modern classrooms might be new to us, the principles that it's built on aren't new, right? Being student-centered, allowing students to truly learn the information, to be able to go at their own pace, to differentiate, that's stuff that we've had PD on for years and years and years. Um, probably some teachers have had PD on that longer than I've been alive. Um, and it's just finally, I think Modern Classrooms puts it all together in a way that works and is sustainable in my opinion. So for me personally, when I talk to caregivers, um, I really take those three tenets of this is a student-centered classroom. They're going to be able to work through the information at their pace. Um, we're going to be working on some executive functioning skills with goal setting. Also going to be seeing them in small groups every day. And we're really going to be focusing on mastering this so that they're truly ready for the next grade level. Um, and I've never had you know any parents be upset about it. Honestly, they, they've always really loved it. And they also really love the instructional videos. I highly recommend that you allow caregivers access to your instructional videos. It can really strengthen that home to school bond. Um, and I know a lot of uh, caregivers have said it's really helpful to be like, okay, what are you learning in school? Okay, I don't quite get how to do that. Let's watch Miss Moon explain it. And then I can go ahead and help you with it. Tavia, I saw you nodding. You want to add to that? Uh, absolutely. I have an elementary school student. And I consider myself a very bright person, but I swear elementary school is different than when I was <laughs> And some of the stuff he's learned, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. And I'm consulting Google. But since the pandemic, his teachers have been putting videos in their Google Classroom. So now when he don't understand something, which luckily for me is very rare, but when he does it a few times, he does come back to a question. We can both go back and I can kind of decipher and help him a little better. So yeah, that is definitely a plus uh, when parents use this. Uh, and have that access to you. Uh, for me personally, I haven't had, and you know, high school is so different. Parents are a lot more hands off in high school. Um, so I don't get, really get a lot of pushback from parents to where I have to answer a lot of questions. Um, most of the questions I get is once they realize what I'm doing and all the teachers who before me haven't done it quite correctly, you know, that whole screen time thing we were talking about. So they haven't done it quite correctly, so they're a little hesitant, but, you know, once they really see that, um, 
I do a little different. Not bad, just different. Um, they're a little more receptive. So it just, I guess, depends on where you are when you're teaching, uh, where you're teaching, because I'm sure Sarah will probably hear a whole lot more questions. <laughs> Yeah, and for me, you know, especially back when I was, you know, using Modern Classroom, like with Fidelity, which was two years ago, um, I, I pretty much let it speak for itself. You know, the, the kids will go home and say, hey, Miss Woodard introduced this thing that we're doing in class. Um, and the parents would just come to me just curious. And I just, I love that about it. Um, you know, during back to school night, they'd come and say, hey, my kid has mentioned this like Modern Classroom thing. I'm just curious about it. Um, and I always thought that was interesting because by then the kids have already been utilizing it and they're kind of able to tell their parents like, oh, I really like this or I don't like this. And so it honestly frames some of the conversations that I have with parents, which I think is great. Um, I think if you're someone and you just want to provide that information up front, definitely do so. But for me, I, I prefer to let the kids go home, kind of talk about it a little bit. And then a few weeks in when we're at back to school night, let the parents kind of come in with their questions that they have and whatnot. Um, because, like I said, it, it, it honestly helps with framing conversations and helps them come with, like, specific things that they want to ask me and whatnot. Monty, something that you said that made me think of it, I think that's really powerful, kind of giving that wait time, not only to frame that conversation, but also just because at the beginning of the year, stuff is a lot, right? Like they're worried about what supplies and what bus route they have and what's their lunch number and all of that sort of stuff. I, I definitely think kind of taking some time to let it sit can, can really be powerful. On that topic of letting some things sit, we have had a great conversation and we have talked about a whole bunch. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, kind of let all of that uh, marinate for a little bit and also share out um, that within the show notes, we have a great resource share. Um, check out the show notes for links about helping roll out the model, including the MCP Classroom Communication Toolkit, um, which also includes that classroom visitor handout. In September of 2022, we'll be back for season two, episode two in September 2022. Too. Um, and we will be all about routines and procedures. So go ahead and start getting hype for that. And also just a friendly reminder that if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy getting some uh, real world practices and updates uh, from this video, definitely make sure that you follow us on all of our socials at Modern Class Proj. And if you're not a part of our private teacher discussion group on Facebook yet, we hope to see you join soon. And remember, guys, to join us on Twitter the first Wednesday of every month at 7 p.m. Uh, at Modern Class Pride. Uh, have some really dope conversations and really to bring different perspectives from not just Modern Classroom for uh, teachers or educators, but from just educators in general. Uh, that we see that we're all kind of really on the same page and we're all in this boat together. Cool. All right, y'all. We so appreciate you watching and we look forward to continuing the conversation on our socials. See you later. Bye. See y'all next month. Bye.